Hello everyone, I am Camden Busey with Reformed Forum. You can find us online at reformedforum.org. I've noticed uh, some interesting trends, and I should say some troubling trends over the last several months. Somewhat of a forensicism I've been seeing in different uh, Twitter streams and blog posts and other discussions that we find in Calvinistic churches and the broader evangelical church. And it's really... Uh, caused me some distress in terms of seeing that people are truncating the gospel. Uh, what we teach at Reform Forum, uh, what we attempt to promote is a thoroughly reformed soteriology, one that does not truncate the gospel but preaches the fullness of Christ and the fullness of his benefits uh, to all people uh, because the, gods, the gospel is offered freely to all. And it is the power of God for salvation to all who believe, uh, Romans 1, 16 and 17. And so I just wanted to speak on behalf of sanctification, because it's the work of the Spirit uh, to put sin to death in your life, and to bring you uh, one day to the point in which you will see your Savior face to face, and you will be glorified. All this goes along with adoption, which is important, and adoption gets plenty of attention in the evangelical world. We have conferences with the name in its title. And of course, justification, which is uh, the hinge upon which the, the gospel turns, uh, so, so it was called by Calvin uh, back in the 16th century. Uh, nobody wants to downplay justification, adoption, or glorification to the expense of, of improving or inflating our view of sanctification. That's not the point. The point is to emphasize and demonstrate that Christ is the gospel. Jesus is the gospel. And that from Him, in union with Him, by the Spirit, we have a full hope, a true and a living hope. One that looks forward to Christ's return. One, and we have a hope that looks at a full gospel, not in a charismatic sense, but a full gospel in the sense that one, it addresses our, the forensic problem, it addresses our guilt, but it also addresses a renovative problem, that is our corruption. And then it addresses our filial problem in the sense that we've been alienated from God and are, not out, and are outside of His family. So we have justification, adoption, sanctification, the primary benefits that flow out of union with Christ. I just wanted to read a few um, verses that address this issue, particularly on the, the side of sanctification, because I'm finding tweets, uh, people are presenting uh, quotes from Lutheran theologians that stress justification to the point of excluding sanctification. Uh, one quote recently was by a man named Gerd Ford, who wrote in this book, uh, I believe it was Four Views on Sanctification, and his is The Lutheran View. That's the title of the chapter, The Lutheran View. And he writes... Sanctification is the art of getting used to your justification. Now, I don't think he could be much more incorrect at that point. Sanctification is so much more than getting used to your justification. It is the work of God. It, is, it begins with your union with Christ and His death. We find that in Romans chapter 6. Let me read 6, uh, verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How... Can we who died to sin still live in it? We died to sin. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. 
We see union with Christ at the core of this verse. And specifically here what Paul is writing of in Romans chapter 6 is union with Christ in his death. And what does that do? It is a principal breach of the power of sin. Because our old self has been crucified. It has been done away with. And now no longer do we live as slaves to sin, but there has been a renovation, a transformation, a breach in the power of sin in the life of the one who believes in Jesus Christ. That is the beginning of sanctification. Some have called it definitive sanctification. Um, John Murray, for one, and others, uh, Dr. Richard uh, B. Gaffin, Jr., Lane G. Tipton, people at Westminster Theological Seminary. Wayne Grudem teaches this in his book, is Systematics. And it is an important doctrine, because without which we would not have hope in our daily life uh, to be able to make progress in sanctification or to be able to have any hope that we are free from sin whatsoever. If the gospel strictly is forensic, then we are right before God. We are not going to be guilty, uh, punished, or called to account. But we don't have hope for today in dealing with sin now. That's why we preach a gospel that views Christ in all of his fullness. Justification, adoption, sanctification being the benefits that flow out of that fullness. Another verse I really want to emphasize is from Ephesians chapter 2, which stresses... The rising with Christ, and now this, the other part of sanctification, the living in resurrection power. Not only have we died with Christ, but we also have been raised with Him now into heavenly places, but we live in the resurrection. We live as resurrected people who have been glorified in the inner man. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, beginning at, uh, I'll, I'll begin at verse 1. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we also, or we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's en Christo. That is emphasizing our union with him. We have been seated with Christ in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. These verses are the heart of the gospel. They're just two perspectives, or two uh, angles on the one benefit of sanctification. And again, I'm stressing that here, not to the exclusion of adoption or justification, but because I see it as deficient in the thoughts of many, uh, particularly in Calvinistic circles. And this is not just a trend that, we find, that we're finding in non-denominational churches either. But we've even been finding these, these quotes, uh, these, these truncated gospel uh, anecdotes or uh, uh, aphorisms in confessional churches. I have before me here a copy of the Westminster Standards, and I wanted to read really quickly chapter 13, which is of sanctification, and then I'll read the answer of the larger catechism, which describe what sanctification is. Chapter 13 of the Westminster Confession of Faith says, They who are once effectually called and regenerated, having a new heart and a new spirit created in them, are further sanctified. Really, and personally, through the virtue of Christ's death and resurrection, by His Word and Spirit dwelling in them. So it's a work of God. It's by His Word and Spirit dwelling in them. It's not the art of getting used to your justification, but it's a work of God in you. Continuing, the dominion of the whole body of sin is destroyed, and the several lusts thereof are more and more weakened and mortified, and they more and more are quickened and strengthened in all saving graces to the practice of true holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. So your, your 
sanctification doesn't make you right with God, before God. It doesn't earn your salvation, but it is a necessary work that the Spirit does in your life, without which you will not see the Lord. And that's coming uh, straight from Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. If the art of san or sanctification is strictly the art of getting used to your justification, you are not going to be seeing the Lord. That's a truncated gospel, and it is no gospel at all. Continuing, section 2. This sanctification is throughout, in the whole man, yet imperfect in this life, there abiding still some remnants of corruption in every part, whence ariseth a continual and irreconcilable war, the flesh lusting against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, in which war, although the remaining corruption for a time may much prevail, yet through the continual supply of strength from the sanctifying spirit of Christ, the regenerate part doth overcome, and so the saints grow in grace, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen to that. That we see that though we don't have the inspired words of God here in the Westminster Confession of Faith, we have uh, godly words that are written by men with many uh, uh, biblical foundations under them. And we have that hope that we will be further sanctified and completely sanctified if we are found in Christ, because we have His Spirit working in and through us to do good works, to put sin to death, and to bring us eventually to the point at which we will see the Lord face to face, and we will be made like Him. That refashioning, that, that uh, recreation that Meredith Klein likes, likes to talk about, that creation into the image of the Spirit, to the image of the Son, will be complete because we have the guarantee of it because we've been given the seal and the promise of the Holy Spirit. And finally, before I close, let me read uh, the Westminster Larger Catechism, question 75. What is sanctification? Sanctification is a work of God's grace, whereby they whom God hath, before the foundation of the world, chosen to be holy, are in time, through the powerful operation of His Spirit, applying the death and resurrection of Christ unto them, renewed in their whole man, after the image of God, having the seeds of repentance unto life, and all other saving graces put into their hearts, and those graces so stirred up, increased and strengthened, as that they more and more die unto sin, and rise unto newness of life. Take that home with you today. Pray over it. Read the verses in Ephesians 2, Romans 6, 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 6, all over the place, we find our union with Christ in His fullness. We are personally, spiritually, and eschatologically united to the Savior. Uh, Ephesians 1, chapter 3, you can find that. And in that union, one aspect of it, and one important, essential aspect of that, is that we are united to Him in His death and His resurrection, and we no longer are slaves to sin. But we have been liberated, freed from that power. We're not a slave to sin, but now we are slaves to righteousness. And that means we don't have to sin today. We don't have to sin tomorrow. But we know that even though we may sin and do sin in this present evil age, that the Spirit is at work within us to continue to mortify, to put that sin to death, eventually to the point where we will be perfect when we die or when Christ returns. And that is the holiness that we have for all of eternity. Sanctification is never complete in this life. But when we see the Lord, it will be. And amen to that. Praise be to God for His gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the one who died and who was raised, and through whom we have justification, adoption, sanctification, all through the Spirit who indwells those who believe.